West Tigers versus the Cowboys Thursday, 7.50. Uh, Tigers, Olam returns from a knee injury. Clemmer returns from an ankle injury, replacing uh, Fanua, uh, Fanua Bolle. Adam Dewey isn't named to return after being rested last week. So that's, uh, that's an interesting one. Uh, even when we found the news that he was being rested last week, I, I commented on that going, that's a bit strange. He hasn't barely played any footy. Cowboys team news. Sam McIntyre replaces Jason Tamalolo, who's out with a fractured cheekbone. Harris uh, Harrison Edwards replaces Cotter, who was out with concussion. Lukey returns from hamstring injury, pushing Fini Fuyaki to the bench. What do you reckon about this one, uh, Horat? Yeah, it's uh, look. Obviously, the Cowboys are playing a lot better. They've got a lot more to play for. Uh, do you factor in desperation? Do you factor in uh, the Tigers having some fight? Um, the big news off the back of Stefano. I'm missing two really big players, though. Ruben Cotter and, and Jason Tomalolo are going to be huge outs for the Cowboys. Jason Tomalolo has hit form in the last four or five weeks. He's playing really good footy. Uh, Ruben Cotter is the heartbeat of that forward pack now through yep. the middle, so they'll be sorely missed. But I still think they've got an, enough ammunition, and I'll be staying on the, the Cowboys for this one. Look, this will be my famous, famous last words, but I think the Cowboys are hitting form. I think the Cowboys are hitting form. Like, I think that... When I say hit and form, I'm not saying hit and form compared to your Storm and your Penrith Panthers. I, I'm i saying hit and form for them. I think that they've been great the last couple of weeks. They've had some really important win against some really tough sides. I mean, you even look at the Bulldogs. That win, because it was against the Bulldogs, I think a lot of people, you know, oh, yeah, they beat the Bulldogs, kind of whatever. But the Bulldogs went and absolutely towed up the Broncos the week before. So that was a big win. Um, I think they're starting to find their groove, the Cowboys. Mm. I, I really do. I think that they always had the attack. It was just their defense they needed to sort. Um, so I think they win, and uh, they win quite big. Um, uh, their, their physicality has gone up. The Cowboys' massively. physicality has gone up. I think it was evident with Jeremiah and I on, on the oh, weekend. He yeah. was going after people. Everyone Jeez. associates Jeremiah and I with try scoring and attacking. I think defensively, he's made a... Um, or and and even you know across the board, yeah. the Cowboys team have made it a real emphasis to go after the game defensively, and it's going to serve them well on this little run into uh, the finals. And I think they're going to be they're going to be that dark horse. They're going to be a very tricky team come finals time, and I think they're going to be fighting for a top four position with potentially the Bulldogs in the very last round. I, I, I'm I'm predicting a shark slide. Yeah, I think the Sharks will slide. And I think and I think it'll be between the Bulldogs and the Cowboys for that final fourth position, top mm. four position, yep. in the very last round they Holy. play each other. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Especially with how close their last game was. Um, yeah, the Cowboys for me, the crazy thing about Nanai is how young he is still. He's 21. 21. <laughs> it's actually mental. Um, and with the Cowboys, if they've got a roll on of their winning field position, Scotty Drinkwater is as good as any fullback in the business when it comes to creating points with his with his ball playing. Like he is so slick. Uh, now onto the Warriors versus the Eels Friday, six pm, Go Media Stadium. The Warriors announced this week they've become the first side in NRL history to sell out every game home game over the course of a season. Final home game against the Bulldogs in round twenty six. Sean Johnson and Charles Nickel Kluxad return. Uh, two of us check moves to the wing. Ed Cossey, Tamari Martin drop out of the side. Eels, no change from the side. The loss of the Storm last week. How do you see this one? Skip. Yeah, look, it looks obvious to the Warriors. This one, I'm, I'm, look, Parramatta are the, probably the best last point or, or, or second last team or at this point of the, the season I've ever seen. Like, mm. there, there is, despite missing Mitch Moses, Jermaine Hopgood, they've still got a pretty talented team. Like, there's some good players in this team. Well, they took it to the Storm last week. Yeah, they did. And, it, you know, like, there was a part early in that game just before Melbourne took it the other way. If mm. Dijon Arcee just passes straight from the ground to Ryan Madison down that short side, yeah. before he made that little error trying to tip it on to, I think it was um, maybe Blaze Talangi. Yep. Then the, the the Storm pick it up, go the other end, and, and then obviously go on with the game. I mm. thought that was, uh, you know, that would have really given Parramatta a little bit more fight. Um, I'm surprised with Tamati Martin being dropped, completely dropped out of the team. Uh, I kind of get it. Uh, he had a, he played really well initially, but just some of his fifth tackle options, his kicking game, uh, uh, just, yeah, left a lot to be desired, to be honest. Do you think the connection with him and, and Sean Johnson doesn't work as well? Doesn't work, because he's not a six, I don't think. Tamati yeah. Martin, to me, is not a six. I thought for a period there he could be. I thought he really worked on his running game, but, you know... It's one thing to do that for one game, but to do it for a whole season, it's a different thing. I think he's an out and out seven, and I just think that when it comes to his kicking game and his his last tackle options, he just needs to work on that before he gets a crack. It's going to be interesting because like the Warriors haven't signed and he haven't re-signed SJ yet. So who's seven next year for him? 
Have you seen some of the content that SJ's been doing? Like yeah, he's got, great. got his new podcast. Yep. Play on. Play on. I think he plays on. I think, think he plays, plays on? on. Yeah. But like, what? Why hasn't the re-sign happened yet? You know what's going uh, on there? I think he's just waiting to see. You know, it's one of those things. <laughs> the play on, play on. But is is that silly from the Warriors? Because like, let's say he decides not to. They've just wasted three months. They could have been in the market. Okay. Yeah, I haven't thought about it from that end. I've been thinking about it. I I get the feeling that Sean is maybe 80, 90% there, mm. and he just needs to get that last 10%. It's been a, a a season off a really good 2023 season where he's been riddled with injury, and he hasn't been healthy the entire year. And I was hearing reports that he was only doing one training session a week with a, with a calf sort of oh, Achilles yeah. injury in the, in the off-season. So that would have been super frustrating. I, I think a big part of it is Sean making sure that he's physically fit going into the 2025 season. Uh, and... I think that'll be determined by how he finishes. I think he's leaning towards re-signing, and therefore that's why the Warriors probably are thinking the same, but it is, is super risky. It's super risky. Because if he doesn't re-sign, then... They are stuffed. It's uh, Chanel, Tamari Martin, and Luke Metcalf. Yeah, which I don't think... like They may be good, but good enough to get them to a top four or a top mm. six finish as to where they were. And they've got but, young Jet Cleary on the way too. Which would be probably a couple of years or two. You'd early. think so. Yeah. Yeah, you'd think so. A year or two away. So um I'm gonna go over the Warriors, not with any confidence though. And shout out to the Warriors. That is an unbelievable stat. Incredible. The, Best fans in the business. I've I've always said, you know, the Warriors fans, you know, when when they went on the when up the winning. was <laughs> when they're winning, oh. this proves um that that up the was movement is just way bigger and has created something so big outside of what the uh, normalcy is for a fan. And uh, they've done a great job. Not, and everyone involved in the club, because to, to lose games and, and be frustrated and, and not have the results of last year, a great job from everyone involved at the Warriors. All right, we're going to head to a break. After the break, we've got Dolphins, Roosters, Titans, Broncos. Just to the side that lost to the Titans last week, the Roosters team news. Joe Mann, who sets a return from his hand injury in the only change to the side that defeated Manly on Saturday night. Michael Jennings drops out through suspension. What do you reckon about this one, Skip? How quickly the players come back now. Mate. When I heard that noise when Joe Manu broke his hand through the, <laughs> the audio through whoever was uh, – whatever coverage I was watching on that, I was like, he'll be back at the finals. It's crazy how quickly they get back now. Mate, the science – Huge in. It, the science that, that the players are dealing with these days, like I don't think people realize like certain injuries that used to take 12 weeks genuinely take six weeks now. Yeah. Like we are talking crazy science they put into it. Yeah, and some of the um the treatment and also the protection, like Viliami Kikau, you see he's been carrying that that broken hand as well for a, like he was only out for like two weeks. Yeah, it's insane. Fractured like, his hand. They've got machines now at clubs. Like let's say you do your ACL or, or a leg machine, like, like your leg injury, where you're not supposed to be running. The reason why you can get it back quicker is they got machines now. They're treadmills, but what they do is is they're like almost in water, and you can you can put in like okay, I want. Oh, yes. I want you to have 50% of your body weight. Yep. So basically what happens is is that let's say you've got a knee injury, you can get on this treadmill and you're actually only ru- running with 10% of your body weight. Yeah. And so you can do the running motion without putting essentially any pressure on that that um, you know that muscle or whatever it is. And that's just one machine. Yeah, that's one. Then before that, it used to be you could only do it in the pool, right? You'd yeah, go in the pool, pool and run in the pool. That was it. Yep. Now, yeah, 10%. That, was, that sort of come in right at the back end of... My career. But um, get to this game. Dolphins, gee, they let that one drop against the Penrith Panthers oh. a couple of weeks ago, and I think it affected them against the Titans last week. Mm. I, I think when the Titans started to come home strong, they started to feel a bit of a hangover from that. And they are probably coming up against one of the worst teams in the competition to play outside of the top two that actually bully teams when they feel like they're... So better, physical. They're like, they physically um, go after teams that they know that they're better than, and they will, again, give themselves a good chance in this game. I I don't know. Do, do you think the Dolphins have done enough this year or up until this point to suggest that they won't significantly drop off like they did last year? Oh, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Uh, I think they've played good enough footy to scrape in the eight. I really do. I think Katoa has been incredible this year. I think yeah. he's been so good. Um, it's just about, you know, like, for example, last game, Geez, they started well. They looked like a cut above the Titans, uh, just a substantially better side. But for some reason, it's like maybe it's the bench rotation. When they come on, they don't have the same intensity, but they just dropped off um, quite dramatically. In regards to the Roosters, I think the biggest 
the biggest concern is like just 80 minute performances. Like they come out and they blow teams off the park and then they'll, they'll take their foot off the gas for a little bit and then they'll finish them off. And I look at the Manly side and, and some people praise the Roosters um, performance against Manly where they go, well, they defended their line for so long. Whereas I'm, I'm kind of the opposite. I, I think that like they came out, put five tries on them like it was nothing. Mm. And then they allowed Manly back into the match. And I just think that if they want to be a premiership threat, they've got, they got to sort that out by the end of the year, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm with you. I was very underwhelmed with yeah. both teams. I was underwhelmed with how easily the Roosters blasted through mm. Manly. And then I was equally as unimpressed by the Roosters by not going on with it. Yeah. I think it goes back to – someone brought this up to me a couple of weeks ago and I noticed it in the – in you know factoring in with why they struggle against Penrith and Melbourne. Long kicking game. They really struggle in the long kicking game. So, for instance, when you get to a 20-point-something lead against a team like Manly, you just strangle them, kick them to corners. They don't have the ability to do that. Well, I think Robbo relies on the fact that his forward pack can make an extra 10 metres each set. And the, and the wingers too. And yeah. Teddy. And yeah. so I think he looks at it and goes, okay, well, most normal sides make about 40 metres a set. My side makes 45 metres every set. Yeah. And so over the span of a game, that's an extra 100 kicking metres. And I think that that's where he looks to make us because they're so good at recruiting. You've got to be – they'd have to be aware of it. Of course. Like they'd have to be aware that those short – a uh, long kicking game's not great. For sure. And I think that was maybe factored into why Sam Walker probably spent a little bit of time in New South Wales Cup mm. last year. Mm. And, and a guy like Drew Hutchinson was brought into the team. Now he's not a, a Matty Burton sort of kicker, but he does kick the ball – a lot further than them. Um, but I will say, I think that's why they struggle against Penrith because they can't blast through Penrith and Melbourne like they do every other team. Mm. They don't have that advantage where they can just roll the ruck and, you know, the Penrith and, and Melbourne storm system is um, a lot more You know, it's funny as cleaner. well. Penrith and Melbourne, this, the, we say the wrestle's gone in this game, but Penrith and Melbourne are still the best wrestles in the competition. Penrith are the best now. They are so good. Penrith do such a good job oh. of catching players. And dragging them Mate. back, and they brought in that the 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 grabbing the leg and lifting it lever. That was to combat what Penrith because, had been doing. Yeah, they drag you back ten minutes. They were dragging players back all the time, which is smart. It's Very so good. smart. Very good. Yeah, but and they were doing it. Yeah, every team was trying to copy them. They just do it more consistently. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, back to this game, Roosters. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go Roosters. Titans, Broncos. This is uh, Desi Hasler sticks with the side that beat the Dolphins last week. Brimo, he's named in the reserves again. Corey Oates replaces Sol and Cobbo on the wing. Pia Cora returns after missing last week with a quad injury. Oh, look, people that think Broncos are going to go out and just blow them off the park, I, I don't think so. I think this is going to be a cracking match. I think this will be a 1-12 to win either way. It's honestly almost 50-50 for me. Yeah, I think it's a I think it's a genuine coin flip. I'm leaning towards the Titans for for a couple of reasons. Mm. When I watched the Broncos and Bulldogs game last week, I was kicking myself that I didn't back at this time of the year consistency over talent. Yeah. So I think Broncos are the more talented team this week and last week, but that wasn't the case. And I think I think the Titans, despite a little blip against the Manly Seagulls, have been a lot more consistent over a four to five week period that I've seen recently, where I think Desi is sort of starting to get. I think he, he's figured out the, the biggest question mark that he's had the entire time with this Titans mm. team was how they fit in Keanu Kinney, AJ Brimson, and Jaden Campbell. I think Jaden Campbell is going to be their long-term six moving forward. Man, how incredible that, that has been. Because like, I think we can all agree, we probably sat back and got, I just don't know if he's big enough for the front line. And I'll put my hand up. Yep. And look, I still want to see a, a whole season. You know, Four or five games is so different to a whole season when it comes to physicality. Um, but for what I've seen so far, he has far exceeded my expectations in defense. So, same as me, mate. Mm. Three or four weeks ago, I'll go back to the Warriors game. Uh, they were very dominant. But my the reason I'm – I was very reluctant to him being in the front line. The way he went after a couple of the back rowers in that game. Yeah. In particular, I was like, all right, this is okay. I thought it might just be one game. Then he backed it up uh, the week after. And he's been really good. He's actually he's he's sort of been going looking for contact, and that's what you you got to do sometimes when you're perceived to be a spot. Rather than just sitting back and letting people come at you, go to them. Go to them a little yeah. bit, spook them because it's it's not that what they would have expected. It wouldn't have been on on the on the on the uh, team sheet. Um, and, and and when you perceive someone to be a spot, and they start checking you, you're like, oh, well, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, we've already got the text here, Scope. Denon, stop being biased. Broncos are gone. Titans win easy. So saying 50-50, <laughs> that's being biased. There you go. We're going to head to a break. After the break, we've got more previews to come. Welcome back to the Captain's Run. We are here for Chemist Warehouse. Get discounted prescriptions and save more money at Chemist Warehouse. Storm v. Dragons. 
Saturday, 5.30, Amy Park. Munster returns to the starting side after starting, after starting last weekend on the bench. Wishart shifts to inter- interchange. Far Longo drops out. Um, Tyrell Sloan for the Dragons returns to the fullback. Fenai is a sideline with a head knock. Couchman replaces a brother, Toby, who was out through suspension. He'll be on the couch this week. Blake Laurie returns to the interchange in place of Murdoch Masilla, who has a foot injury. Uh, Storm. I mean, the biggest uh, news for me with the Storm is Wishart uh, getting that 14 role and far longer dropping out. Now, granted, I, you know, in podcast on Monday, I thought that's what Craig Bellamy would do. Yep. But it's still a huge, huge decision with how good Fata Longo has been off the bench. Yeah, I thought there was a world in which they both could have played. Carried them both. Yeah, I, I was thinking that could be the case. And I still think there might be certain matchups, certain games where he might implement that. Like, okay. Craig Bellamy's been the sort of guy, too, where he hasn't... Like he mixes it up a little bit. He's very game plan specific. That's he's not as conservative as people think he is. Nah, the beauty of ca- of the Melbourne Storm is they come in with a really specific game plan on a lot of teams. And, yeah. and with some teams, it might be uh, having a little bit more versatility. Uh, when he's looking at the Dragons lineup, he might think they're big bodies. We're going to need some some big bodies on on the sideline. I mean, sorry, on the on the bench. So therefore, uh, go with a bigger lineup. Um, Missile brought this up with to me on, on the Moles a couple of weeks ago, and it's the form of the Dragons. And su- and it suggests that the the dragons are going to win this game because they've been the win- dragons the, the dragons oh, yeah. every, every week in week they flip yeah they, they've been uh, uh, win one week lose the next week since week nine mate they're the most inconsistent side in the comp but that's a good thing when you're looking at where they were that they're the most cons- inconsistently consistent yeah. team in the competition because like usually they'll have a terrible loss and they'll come out the next week and play like a bloody top four side yeah. I've loved some the Dragons big teams, this year, Some mate. big teams that they've knocked off during oh, that. Absolutely. The Imagine Broncos, if they could do that Penn just because Panthers. of this, this one streak. Um, you think Melbourne Storm, right? It's a, Surely. It's a lock. But <laughs> I love the Dargans. <laughs> I like the Dargan streak. I, <laughs> like, love, I love little things like this. I think it's cool. And, and, and you know, the, the all the chat around the Bulldogs at the start of the year with the 2024-2014. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all that sort of jazz. Mate, I, I love all that stuff. I cannot believe. I mean, we'll get to it, but I can't believe the Bulldogs actually might have <laughs> top four. <laughs> top four. Mate, at the start of this year, if you had a set top eight, I would have said that's a miracle. Anyway, we'll get to the doggies. Um, with the Dargans, what I love about them is like they just I, – I love that Flanagan has like in just injected character. There's something happening. Mm. I just feel like for so many years with the Dargans, like it was – it was the recruitment was safe. The game plans were safe and boring. Like there was no kind of risk and reward, whereas – I know they're inconsistent this year, but at least they're trying things. They were playing a real negative style of footy. They were almost the OG team to do the old don't put the kick in, run it on the last. <laughs> Every, mate, remember a couple about three or four years ago, I actually lived with a, a player from the Dragons. <laughs> he told me. No way. That was their game plan, mate. They would get there and instead of um, risking a seven-tackle set when they first come in because they were so – like the, the analytics around it and the percentages of how teams yep. broke during that period – they were like the first team to go, let's continually run it. Now, a lot of teams do it, yep. but I think the Dragons have gone the other way. Under Flano, I think they chance their arm a little bit more than what you know probably some of the better teams do, which I is like good. It. It's entertaining, and therefore, it's probably why you see the inconsistent consistencies yeah. Mate, <laughs> week in, week out I with tell the you Dragons. what, we all had them on the bottom of the table. The Dragons deserve a massive rap this I year. I did. I had them bottom two, mate. So, uh, But I also love being proved wrong. I oh, love you know, the start of the year when you do your predictions and you see a team fly. It's yep. so good. Um, I'm going Storm here. But, yeah, Sharkies versus the Rabbitohs. Saturday, 7.30, Shark Park. Shark team new- news. Kennedy returns to suspension fullback. Mulatalo knee injury. Sees Sam Stone Street brought on the wing. Royce Hunt returns after missing last weekend with an injury. Hazleton drops out with a foot injury. Rabbitohs team news. Cam Murray returns from his origin suspension. Moving Talis Duncan to the bench. Fletcher Myers makes his NRL debut on the wing in place of injured Alex Johnston. Richie Kenner returns from concussion and centers moving Michael Cheeham to the bench. What do you reckon? Sharks v. Rabbitohs, mate? I think this is another genuine coin flip for the two players. One, Cam Murray's back for the Rabbitohs. Mm. Uh, that makes South City so much better. And I think Ronaldo Mulatalo, his presence and his uh, leadership in that team, I think that'll be sorely missed for Cronell. I think it's probably he's probably one of the more underrated players with regards to the impact that he has on the team. He's very emotional. He has... Some mm. moments where you, uh, you know, come on, you got to, he lets his emotion get the best of him. Yep. But I still think he's a really important part of that team, and I think he'll be missed. Oh, Mass, I think he's the heart of their team. Mm. Like, he, I think he's similar ish to like a critter in the outside backs, where 
you know, he's the pulse. He's yep. the pulse. When things are going well for Mulatalo, things are going well for the whole team. When things are going bad for Mulatalo, things are going bad for If the he's team. chirping at someone, Cronulla are traveling. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Um, look, I'm going to go the Sharkies in this one, but I do think the Rabbitohs, if the conditions are good, and why I say this is like, I didn't tip him against the Raiders because we're talking Sunday night, 6 p.m. down in Canberra, the work, like freezing cold, you've got nothing to play for. That's the perfect ingredients for a team to just go, ah, stuff it with the Rabbitohs. Yep. Whereas I do think that we're going to find games with the Rabbitohs in the last few weeks where it's going to be a fast track, beautiful night or day, and they're going to be like, yeah, nothing to lose. Let's just play a booty footy. And they're going to put a few teams to the sword because they got the side to do it. Yeah, I agree. And it's going to be like, it'll be similar to the Tigers game where it'd be a points first and they'll just be happy, happy to score 36 to 28 yep. or and something like that. And just have like fun because the season's over. They're not going to win the spoon. Not going to get close to winning the spoon. I, I'm going to go I'm going to go uh, the Rabbitohs in this one. I think yeah. they can pull it off in this game. I'm the same as you. I didn't have them against the Canberra Raiders for the reasons that you said. <laughs> but they were missing both their star player and captain. Yep. They get their captain back this week. Now, the Sharkies. It's, I'll tell you what. If you ever needed an example of how important it is to bank wins at the start of the season, look at the Sharkies. Yeah. Because you look at their last eight games, it's like two from eight or one from eight. It's It's... Really, really poor reading, and they're still in the top four. They're getting wobbly, aren't they? They're, they're getting wobbly. I thought I, I, I loved the performance of Braden Trindle last week, actually, against the the Cowboys. I thought he really went after that game. Um, it's, it wasn't super clean, but I just look for little effort areas sometimes, and, and the way he was, I like it when I when I'm looking at a player and he looks like he's completely gassed. Yeah. So for me, not necessarily about the actions or what led to that, is that he's leaving it all out there. And I feel like Braden Trindle, uh, since the uh, Nico injury, and even before that, actually, when he missed some time uh, with the calf injury early on and, and around origin period, has really been going after the games. Do you think he's an out-and-out out seven and not a six? Because my concern with Trindle is that he he has grown up being the main man, number seven. Mm. And my worry is is that Hines and him, they've tried to gel. It just hasn't seemed to work so far. And that when... Hines does come back. The question is, is Trindle is a better player than Atkinson, but does he complement Hines better than Atkinson? It's a good question. It's a really good question. It's yet We're yet to be seen. Mm. I do have faith in them too. Yep. I had little faith going into the season. Okay. I seen enough during that period when they were traveling before the injury and before the off-field off issue that Trindle had. Yep. I, I think I'd seen enough during that period where I thought they could complement each other. Now, it doesn't look great in the last few weeks, but they haven't played together much yep. at all so I do think they can work long term I just I, I watch him play now as a seven he looks so much more comfortable like it whereas when he's playing six I just feel that sometimes him and Hines like they just don't seem to be clicking and mm. I was actually heading into the season I was really positive on it oh, you're thought, the opposite yeah I thought it was really going to work <laughs> Um, but I, yeah, as I said, I just I look at everything, the body language, the the energy. When he's in that seven jersey, it's completely different to when he's in that six jersey. So I just worry that if he kills it at seven, it almost might mean a bad thing for him because then they might go, okay, he's in the out and out seven. Maybe we need to put Atkinson. But we'll see. We'll see. I think that if I had to bet on it, when Hines does come back, they will move him to six. But it will be a question that in that week or two that Hines is back, if it doesn't work out, Axon might get put in, put in there. I've always been big on the jerseys doesn't, the jersey number really doesn't matter as long as there's communication around mm. uh, the detail of what they do as a partnership. Like I, I think sometimes players can wear the the so different numbers and it not change to, remember when Roosters were stuffing around with the Kiri 7 and 6 and moved, um, well, they swapped their jersey numbers. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't really matter about the number on the back as much as long as there's a more um, clear and um, clear role from both in what their roles are specifically as halves in the team. All righty. We are going to head to a break. After the break, we're going to get to the Panthers v. Knights, the Doggies v. the Raiders. The starting side, Eisenhuth recalled onto the bench. Iongi makes his NRL debut. That's Isaiah Iongi. Debut at fullback with Edwards and Laurie, both sideline with injury. I tell you what, you want to watch a bloke with good footwork? This kid can move. Unbelievably explosive. Who, Knights Caelan Ponga? <laughs> <laughs> Knights Teen News. Hastings has been dropped with Phoenix Crossland taking over at halfback. Mm. Mate. <laughs> oh, first of all, like, I love Crossland getting more game time because I'm a massive Crossland fan. Yeah. But like a guy... Comes out of school. He's basically Australian seven. They force him in to become a utility. Kills it at nine. And now all of a sudden he's playing seven again. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, Jaden Bradley returns at hooker. 
Best is out with a hamstring injury. Dylan Lucas shifts to the centres with Adam Elliott joining the back row on his return from a calf complaint. And Cogger joins the bench. Uh, so, oh, look, with the Knights, I, I don't know what's happening up there, to be honest. I think that um, I think we're actually going to see a lot of pain before some almost regrowth. The fact that, like, Cogger gets signed, all this drama happens in, out of the side. Now he joins the bench, and you've got Crossland starting at seven. Like, but I just can't understand the thought process. Surely Cogger starts in this Surely. right? Are we assuming that Cogger's going like, to start why? in this? Then what, what's this whole... Then, then why pl- name him on the bench? Yeah. Um, so they can be secretive against the Penrith Panthers and somehow <laughs> get a leg up on them? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, you'd think Cogger would start um, and they'd be looking at him long term if they in, are indeed mm. chipping Jackson Hastings off. Because... You're right. Like like you said, Phoenix Crossland, he'd come through as a half. He finally started looking really good and consistent last year in the nine jersey. And there were reports with O'Sullivan uh, now in the building that a few senior players had been given the tap on the shoulder, one of those being Braley. So you just assume Cogger at seven, right? Yeah. Crossland at nine. nine and, yeah. and then Braley off the bench if he's been shopped around. Yeah. Yeah. That makes the most sense. Yep. Whether those reports are true, we, we, you know, we, we don't know. But unfortunately... They're not going to figure it out this weekend because they're playing the Penrith Panthers. <laughs> I think it's going to be a tough, tough game. Very, very tough game. I, I don't see them winning. I don't I don't see it being close, to be honest. I think Panthers absolutely dominate this. I think Panthers are starting to feel, you know, finals footy around the corner. They understand that they can't wait until finals footy arrives to be in finals footy form. They need to build into it. They've been there. They've done it. They know exactly what to do to get ready for finals footy. What a luxury it is to have the best player in the world not play a significant amount of games in the last two or three years in origin. Uh, He missed a a number of origins which he would have played in. Therefore, once the origin series finished, he has a chip on his shoulder because Queensland have beaten New South Wales and he felt like if he was there, he could have played a part in it. Now he's also got a chip on his shoulder because Mitch and Jerome got the job done. So that's equally going to pee him off. Yep. And it's just unfair for everyone else in the competition. And also, now Fisher-Harris is going to have two to three weeks off, which is actually perfect (laughs) because he was going to be ready and raring to go for the final series. Uh, They're going to win four in a row. I think they might. I think they might. Okay, now the Doggies versus the Raiders. Sunday, 4 p.m., Belmore Sports Ground. Bulldogs team news, Crichton. Josh Adokar both returned from injury, which is interesting because I the reports that I had read was Crichton had done nerve damage and that, that they were it was indefinite. Mm. Um, but even the great guru on Monday, Monday said no, no, he'd been hearing that Stephen Crichton is back and he is back. Adokar returns from injury. Kiraz returns to the wing. Wilson and Skelton both drop out. No changes from the team that defeated the Rabbitohs for the Raiders. How do you see this one, mate? This is where I like Iron Sharpens Iron Beak. Mm, this okay. is, you know, in the outside backs, uh, you've got to feel sorry for Scouting and Blake Wilson who have oh. been really good yes. in filling in for these senior players. But, geez, it makes them look that much harder. This is, I feel like this is going to be tricky. Bulldogs are, they got, there were no expectations on them going to Brisbane, in, in my opinion. Which was bizarre to me. Externally, internally, yeah. they would have had yeah. for sure. They, you know, uh, they would have thought they could have gone up and, and did the job that they did to the Broncos up there, which is crazy because of how consistent they've been when you think about it. And again, it's why I was kicking myself watching that game. The Raiders are two from two with Fogarty back. They're gritty. Well, that's that's the thing. I think that the Raiders are almost the perfect team to play the Docs because they, they are also gritty. You yes. know what I'm saying? I, I, in terms of the Bulldogs getting a really good finals-type win mm. and game and then being able to kick like you think it's a positive for the dogs that they're playing a gritty team like the Raiders because that that's the sort of footy they want to play well no I think the Raiders like suit they suit playing against the Bulldogs I agree yeah because they're a gritty pack that wants to get down and dirty I agree they don't want to you know go side to side these two teams would both be really happy with winning a game 8-6 10-6 yeah. something like that yeah. like that's not going to happen yeah. but they they would both be going into that game with this mindset yeah I guess the concerning thing for the Raiders is is the Bulldogs out of nowhere went up to the Brisbane and said oh you know how everyone's t- said that we're a defensive based team well actually here's some of the best attacking <laughs> footy you've ever seen and so that's where I think if the Bulldogs can replicate that then maybe they do put a bit of a score on. But I do think that the Raiders will drag them down into the mud. And I think that the natural instinct of the Bulldogs will be like, oh, we love that. That's what we built our brand on this year. Yeah. 
and I think it's going to be a dog fight for yeah, at least 60 minutes. Yeah, you're right. You've got to have versatility too, like to not only win this game, but if, if Bulldogs have aspirations of, you know, being a, being a tricky team, if they do indeed manage to get that fourth position, they've got to be able to win games in multiple ways. And um, yeah, even though I was kicking myself about not picking the Bulldogs in that game, there's no way I envisioned them oh. playing that the way they did. I thought it was going to be... Um, you I know, thought they'd just frustrate Broncos. Yes, That's into a 16-14, 16-10 yeah. game like I yeah. think this game's going to be. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go to the Bulldogs because they're at home. What about the Raiders? Like, I just, I'm such an admirer of them as a club, you know. They're currently sitting ninth in there on equal points to the Dolphins in eighth. Like, them heading into this year, I had them as my biggest sliders. And once again, Ricky Stewart's Raiders just battle, fight, out of sight, don't get appreciated, don't get the headlines. And they still find themselves within striking distance of a of a top eight finish. I think they've got some of my like, in terms of young players, some of my favourite young players in the competition right right now, and some really like, not that he's underrated, Joseph Tarpany, but he's one of my favourite players. I think to he's watch. underrated. I really do. Yeah. To the wider audience, I think he is. Yeah. Like, to the wider audience, you're correct. Like I think that a lot of people would look at Payne Haas and Adam Fenor Blake in you know, even Fisher-Harris and Leota and go, yeah, they're the top-tier forwards. Tarpane is in the same category as them. Yep. Matter of fact, you go back, you watch Australia versus New Zealand and that record win, guess who the best player on the field was? Yeah, Tarpane. It was Tarpane. And Fisher-Harris was really good as well. But those are... And then even a guy like Elliot Whitehead, 200 games yeah. after playing, Butler. feels like 500 in the Super League oh. before he'd got here. Um, he's one of my favourites to Great. watch. Legend of a bloke too. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just a good human. You're right, I love... And I love... Ricky, it feels like Ricky every year does this to a player where uh, a player that had high expectations uh, hadn't quite lived up to it. They get a reality check, and I'm talking about Xavier Savage. Yeah. And I think Xavier Savage is going to be in contention for the Maroons next year. Right, okay. Yeah, that's okay. my early crow. Okay. That is my early prediction. I just love the way he's attacking games, his physicality. Yeah. Um, he's rounding his game out. He has. Yeah. And it's more effort. So yeah. instead of doing the pretty plays, which we were accustomed to a couple of years ago, mm. it's effort plays that have been really standing out for him. So, um, yeah, I think he's going to be part, not make the team, maybe game one, but mm. be a part of the origin discussion. All righty. We're going to head to a break. After the break, we've got your text to get to.